Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Star Fox. In the last part, we finished off the level 1 path with our first venture through Venom, and now it's time for us to start off level 2 with Corneria once again as all three paths do start here. Now while the level description is the same, the enemy variety and layouts do change on every stage, as does some of the hazard designs, so we're at least in for something new. Good luck! <laughs> And I meant when I said I love that sequence so much. I'm staying silent for that all three times. Now, if I were to summarize level two, it's... I, I know I called it last part normal mode, or no, two parts ago normal mode, but if I were actually to... After some more consideration, rather, the more I think about it, level one's more or less normal mode. Level two is hard, and level three is very hard. The basic mechanics don't change. In fact, we even still have the same archway to get the first Twin Blasters upgrade trick to do, thanks to Sl uh, Slippy. But at the end of the day, all that's here is more enemies, more hazards, in a much more tight layout. You're gonna need to bring a better game for level 2, though, because it is overall much harder. Though admittedly, as I'll go over later on again, I think level 2's difficulty is a bit more sporadic than level 1, because level 1 starts fairly easy and ends harder, but still, like, manageable. This starts off harder and then kind of gets manageable towards the end. It, start, it has a weird difficulty curve, comparatively. Either way, I mentioned last part that each of the levels actually has a description in the manual. The description for Cornaria is that it is the fourth planet of the Lilat system and is known as the breadbasket of the system. It is a fertile farming world with a variety of climates and terrains, and most of the inhabitants live in a shelter. The mountain ranges where the most productive farming soil can be found. Corneria is a peaceful planet with only the smallest of defense forces. Most of its starships are designed for exploration and transportation. When Andross's invasion fleet threatened the planet, it was up to General Pepper to improvise some kind of planetary defense. He hired the Star, Fo Star Fox team to pilot their experimental R-Wing fighters. Now, something I've also found kind of odd about the planet descriptions is that it's only for the planets in the asteroid fields. Sectors X, Y, and Z, which are... A good amount of the stages in the game, all things considered, given how many how few stages there are in the game. Don't have any description at all, which is kind of odd. However, thankfully, there are actual descriptions of the characters, so I can just not I can just use those instead of my kind of lackluster comparison of their characters last part, or I think that was part one. Uh, Fox is the young leader of the Star Fox team, always at the forefront of the team's attack. He's an aggressive fighter who must often rely on his skill to get his team out of trouble. Your skill will determine if his name goes down in space history as a champion of the people, or as a space rogue scoundrel. Level 2 also makes use of the little tilting function quite a bit more, because in level 1 you never really needed to change your rotation at all in order to get through obstacles. Here you're going to have to if you want an easier time. Corneria's boss is still the attack carrier, and its major difference is that it's more aggressive. That's about it. Shoots out a few more... Uh, mooks to fight you, and I think it just does more damage. I'm actually not sure if the damage gets boosted on level 2, or if it's just that there's more things trying to damage you. Most, uh, shoot -em ups from my knowledge tend to do the latter, mostly because most shoot -em ups like this don't have HP bars, it's one hit and you're done. So I'm assuming it's probably that, but, yeah, the, the levels themselves are also just in general harder. The attack carrier, though, there's only so much you can do to make this boss hard, honestly. It's the first boss for a reason, and it will forever be the easiest boss in the series. Corneria level 2 is more complicated than level 1, just given the, the, amount, uh, the higher amount of things they like to throw at you. But ultimately, I think all three of the Cornerias are still very, very doable um, for any kind of experienced player, really. Newbies might have some trouble with level 3 in particular, I'll get into that later. But even level 2, I think, is very doable. You might die along the way, but eh, we all die in this game at some point or another. Because this game can get hard. And now it's time for Sector X. This is the hardest level in this pathway, I'll be completely honest with you. Sector X. 
Andros's forces intend to build a base in this area. Destroy their rock crusher. Yeah, the rock crusher is once again our goal this time around. But Sector X, if I were to compare this to anything sci-fi related, it's the rush on the Death Star <laughs> from uh, New Hope. There are a shitload of enemies here, and they're all trying to kill you. However, the enemies aren't even the biggest complaint about it. You might notice how I'm going out of cockpit view despite being in space here. The biggest difficulty about Sector X, and this goes for uh, another stage later on as well, is that there is actual geometry to avoid in space here beyond just meteorites, and these things are rotating and are very likely to hit you. Given the death perception in the game, even in cockpit view, figuring out where you are in comparison to all of these is hard. In the early sections, it's not too bad, but later on in this stage, it just gets plain ridiculous. I hate these space bars. I'm assuming these actually are supposed to be the construction materials for the base that Andross' forces are trying to build. But, uh, like, this here, I have never been able to truly do this without getting hit. It always happens at least once. I, it makes me wonder, though, seeing that, why... Obviously, Star Fox 64 and Zero are more or less of both a remake of this game in some regards. But why did we never get a outright remake of this game with the same kind of level design ideas? Or at least as maybe bonus stages kind of thing. Like, say, if Star Fox 64 had had these as extra levels, that could have been cool. Admittedly, though... I think this stage is probably one of the harder ones if you overclock the game to have maximum frame rate. Oh, damn it, that's bad. I really recommend trying to get that shield if you can, because having the ability to take basically two or three free hits in an area like this is very preferable. Yay. That's always tight. Sector X is the hardest level in level two for a fact, I can say that. There might be harder bosses throughout the area, throughout the pathway, but in terms of a stage, nothing gets as damaging as this. Not to say I still won't be taking a good amount of damage, all things considered, still, because I can be kind of reckless in the Star Fox games. But, in terms of what's thrown at you directly, with the, thanks to these weird T's, S's, and pluses, and I's, you're gonna be taking a lot of damage here in your first playthrough, more than likely. If there's any reason I actually recommend staying away from level 2 to start off, it's this level. I will always be someone who vouches for playing through the levels in order just to make sure you learn the game properly. Now something I've also forgotten to mention about Nova Bombs, that I believe they actually go from level to level in terms of the amount you have. Uh, certain Star Fox games, I swear I recall this at least, uh, make it so that you start with three smart bombs no matter what where you are, but I think this is the only game that they carry between levels. Mind you, I might be wrong about that. I actually haven't played 64 in a while. Either way, the boss of Sector X is once again the Rock Crusher, and like with the Attack Carrier, it's just more aggressive. There's nothing really else different about it. I actually like to use Smart Bombs in this one, though, just to make it go a bit faster. Because a well-placed Smart Bomb can take out all four of those things at once, making the first phase go really quickly, and then level two, I can just spam fire my, double, my level two Twin Blasters right into its face. If this thing has a face, in fact, that's probably more accurately the bridge. Sector X, like I've said, very dangerous stage. And honestly, it's probably the worst part of level two. Uh, if you can beat this, you can beat the rest of the path, no problem. As you can see though, I, uh, I cut a little bit close there in my health bar. <laughs> And I will take that extra credit. And now it's time for the third stage of Path 2. Titania, Titania, Titania. One of those three, more than likely. And this stage has its own tribulation, but it's a much easier one to get around. The planet Titania. Corneria's resource world has been overrun. You must retake the weather control unit. That will come into play, I want to say maybe about halfway through the level. I'll talk about that then. 
Similarly to Meteor back in Path 1, this is a stage where draw distance can potentially be an issue for you if you're staying in certain areas. If you're not careful, you will very easily hit one of these ice walls, especially if you're recklessly boosting forward. However, I can say I love the music of this planet. Not my favorite song in the game, I think that's one of the ones on level 3, but this is a... it's so funky. We also have, I think, fairly unique hazards in this area with those little doors that flip around when you shoot them. I think they're supposed to be kind of a little newbie trap where the first time you shoot them, you might think they're just doors that are gonna fall, uh, go up, and then come back down, but no, these ones outright rotate. I think there might be like a Nova Bomb or two hidden behind some of them throughout the stage, but not too worth noting. We want to go down behind this door because this is the weather control unit Pepper mentioned. Now, the place has been... Uh, the climate's been fixed, essentially. Uh, in the planet bio, which I'll describe, uh, say in a moment, basically the place was forced to go under a freezing to stop resources. Uh, but I should mention, if you don't pick the right door there, and you don't find the weather control unit, and it's always in the door on the right, I should mention. Uh, the level loops. Indefinitely. You'll always go through the first little section that we did before you hit that, uh, unit. Either way, Titania... It's the second planet of the system. It has no indigenous creatures and is nearly always wrapped in a dense fog. This planet is known as a treasure world because of the large deposits of raw materials that can be found there. What has not been hit as hard by Andros' invasion as some other planets have, is occupied by a large garrison of his troops. The resources here are extremely valuable to Andros' plans of future conquest. Honestly, once you unfreeze the planet, the issue with the draw distance and sudden walls doesn't become much of an issue anymore. And at this point, the level basically becomes about on par with... Uh, honestly, Meteor Base in difficulty. It's about as hard as a Path 1 level. Now let's head back to the character bios with Falco Lombardi. As a member of an avian race, Falco Lombardi is at home in the skies or in space, where his piloting skill exceeds even that of Fox McCloud. While his short temper might lead to mainly to arguments with Fox, the two remain fast friends and loyal allies when it comes to combat. For now, at least, I'm looking at you. Apparently what happened in Adventures and some stuff, some of the things in Command. Command was weird. <laughs> like, the gameplay was... Okay, but man, all the story paths, some of those got weird. Next up is Peppy Hare. Peppy is the moderating force of the Star Fox team. His gentle character and wealth of knowledge make him an invaluable balance to the chaotic chemistry of the other Star Fox team members. His skill as a pilot is an added plus. And now it's time for us to head into the boss fight. The boss of Titania is a bit of an odd one. This is... I think this is called the Professor Hanger. But this fight is on wheels. The way that it starts off is that once we get outside, a few enemies are going to fly at us. We need to shoot them down before the actual boss will show itself. At that point, the boss is going to come down uh, the sort of railway. It's kind of like a roller coaster from the center of the screen. And it'll spawn some enemies to try and jump on you, and that's its main way of attacking. I think it has some projectiles, but honestly, if you have level 2 twin blasters, the moment it shows up, you can just spam fire and not really have to fear for your life at all. Professor Hangar, or I guess it might be Hangar, is not a hard boss at all, really. Like Titania's second half entirely, really. From here on out, level 2's difficulty is going to be more in line with what we saw back in level 1. Which is kind of an odd difficulty balance, but... Okay. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 4, we'll be finishing off level 2 with the last two levels of it. See you guys, then.